Today is Kim Jong-un's 34th birthday. In a few hours from now, he'll get to showcase his maturity as North and South Korea sit down for their first direct talks in two years. Anxiety about North Korea's nuclear program is running higher than ever because of the breathtaking advances in its missile capability. The program has accelerated so quickly that experts suspect that Kim has gotten outside help from thousands of miles away. This is the Yuzhmash rocket factory, once the hub of Soviet nuclear missile production. During the Cold War, the ICBMs they built here were so destructive, NATO gave one of them the codename Satan. Vladimir Kuchenko is a senior manager at the plant. When times were good, the factory made dozens of missiles a year. But since the fall of the Soviet Union, Yuzhmash and its partner design bureau, Yuzhnoya, have had to remake themselves as a specialty manufacturer for space-going rockets. What is this a piece of here? Antares. This is the part of Antares, bag of water, bag of water. There are also the part of the rocket carrier, Zenit. The equipment is impressive, but in reality, Yuzhmash is hanging by a thread. Many of its promising contracts are on hold. Russia, once a major client, is now a national adversary. The Brazilian government had been slated to invest in a major project here until Brazil's economy fell apart. Meanwhile, Yuzhmash has shrunk from 40,000 workers to just 7,000. And those who stayed say they often go long periods without pay. Yuvgeny Derkach worked at Yuzhmash between 2011 and 2017 as a machine operator. Now he's a leader of a union that's been protesting the cutbacks. North Korea. Last year, Michael Elliman, an American weapons expert, published a high-profile report suggesting that these conditions may have led to someone from Yuzhmash or Yuzhnoya selling rocket engines to North Korea. The economic downturn that we've seen um, for Yuzhnoy, um, lost contracts that they've had, you know, a lot of people have gone unemployed. So it is possible that uh, some unfortunate uh, unemployed and desperate um, engineers may have helped facilitate an illicit network uh, to acquire the engines and transfer them. Has there been any history of people trying to steal information from Ukraine for North Korea or sell it or in any way? In Dnipro itself, there were two North Koreans who were arrested uh, trying to get uh, sensitive information um, about missiles. There is evidence that the North Koreans have been sniffing around to, uh, trying to find technology, hardware, anything to support their weapons programs. The company is desperate to prove that this didn't happen. To make their case, officials offered Vice News a rare look inside their operation. Two days of choreographed tours, presentations, and lectures. tests, firing tests. All of which they documented carefully. And they consistently hinted at an alternate theory, that Russia, not Ukraine, is the source of the North Korean technology. It is not possible that single engineer, even having access, full access, to the hardware, will be able to reproduce this engine. I mean, someone must have helped them, right? I mean... Somebody having access to this, or understanding all this stuff, uh, should help them yeah. to do this. Or, or they're incredible geniuses, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Could somebody steal this or, or some parts of this from here? Nobody. No, nobody couldn't, really. 
The truth is, there's no solid public evidence that suggests North Korea got its technology from Ukraine. Even Elliman now says it might have been the Russians. But the mere possibility is deeply worrisome. Maxim Strika is a Ukrainian deputy minister who helps run an organization called the Science and Technology Center, which the United States helped set up after the fall of the Soviet Union for just this reason, to keep scientists and engineers from selling their know-how to the highest bidder. They lost their links with Russia. They had, in many kinds of uh, situations, they're pushed from Western markets. And then, of course, many bad things can happen. Trika says that over time, the threat fell off America's radar. They did not fund from the Department of State no longer any program of support of Ukrainian scientists. Because they don't think it's an issue anymore? Uh, that's not a question for me. Does it feel from your point of view that people have forgotten about this risk? We are trying to explain that there is still a great risk like this because uh, we are the country with great uh, scientific potential and we are now in, the, in, some, in some kind of in a desperate situation. At Yuzhmash, proving that they didn't share the technology is more than just about integrity. It's about saving any hope of future deals with the West. Uh, 